We let the fly tell us what's important. And I know that sounds sort of crazy. It's not like we're fly whispers, but we really pay attention to how it's put together and how it's functioning. My research is at the interface of neurobiology and biomechanics. One of the things that I did with the Packard uh, Fellowship was to try to build this experimental infrastructure in the lab, because I wanted to have an environment where a graduate student or a postdoc could sort of come into the lab and say, you know, I want to try something crazy today. I, I, uh, and in order to do that, I got to put together some nutty thing. Whenever I say fly tarp, people imagine that we have these little tiny fly-shaped robots that can walk around on their little legs, and it's a super uber fancy uh, micro robot, but it's actually much simpler than that. There's a, a camera that basically watches the fly and measures its movement. The fun part of it is that we can basically pretend to be a fly because we can program whatever behavior we want into the little fly robot and see how the real fly responds. The challenge was going to be how would we ever record from the, the cells in the brains of flies while the flies were actually flying. This of course is, is absolutely essential and we believe that these transitions in the brain may be linked to the activity of, of neuromodulators that can basically rewire to have the brain do different tasks at different times. And this may be part of trying to understand how such a small brain, a brain the size of a salt grain, is able to accomplish so many different behavioral tasks. The goal is to really make people think about flies in a, in a different way. And it, and, and it doesn't have to be flies, it could be dandelions, redwood trees, bacteria. It, it could be anything in the natural world. If you have just enough knowledge to see the world for what it is, it's an amazing gift.